Well, President Trump slamming Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi and Senator Chuck Schumer on wanting to bail out cities before handling the COVID-19 stimulus relief. Take a listen. Look, what Chuck Schumer wants more than anybody, and I would say Nancy Pelosi would be second, they want to bail out cities and states that have done a bad job over a long period of time. Nothing to do with coronavirus or China virus or whatever you want to call it. They want to bail out cities and states. They want bailout money. They want a trillion dollars in bailout money. And here now is Charlie Hurt. He's the Washington Times opinion editor and a Fox News contributor. Charlie, before we talk about the state's uh, bailout or, or Pelosi's desire for one, don't we still have over a trillion dollars from previous coronavirus bills that have yet to be spent? Yes, indeed, we do. And of course, you know, I think President Trump understands uh, better than anybody in Washington that, the, that in the long run, the most popular, the most successful solution here is to do whatever it takes to get the economy going again. And just throwing money at, at various problems, you're just, you're, all you're going to do is run out of money and rack up more debt. None of it works unless you figure out a way, unless they figure out a way to jumpstart the economy and get the, the economy growing in a, in a dynamic, vibrant way. But my point is, we've already got this, this money online, money that all sides have agreed to spend. Uh, and before we talk about, I, mean, I, I know it's a novel thought, but before we talk about going more in debt than we already are, how about spending the money that's already been allocated? No, absolutely, absolutely. But, but I think at this point, and, and this is part of the problem that, that President Trump faces and Republicans face, they're not uh, arguing with people that I think are terribly honest brokers. They, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, that what they're looking for right now, they're looking for political posturing. And they have figured out that this political posturing, where they can hold up uh, anything that they can hold up in order to, 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 to pin blame for the pandemic and the economic collapse on Republicans, on President Trump, they think that that's a big winner in November. And, and they're probably right. And that's why the, the most important thing that, that President Trump can do and Republicans can do is do whatever it takes to jumpstart the economy and, to, and to, to, to turbocharge this recovery so that we don't wind up with one of these, you know, uh, eight-year Barack Obama yeah. malaise recoveries well, that nobody ever feels. Charlie, that's, that's what the president is trying to do. But, you know, the, the GOP in the Senate and, and the House don't have the same kind of gumption that he does to hold the line. Right. And I'm wondering on this particular issue of states and cities, because uh, I think it's true that a lot of the, that trillion dollars that Nancy Pelosi wants for the states and the cities involve bailing them out for things that happened long before the virus ever caused economic problems. But I'm wondering if the GOP in the Senate and the House will have the gumption to hold the line on that issue. I think we have seen throughout the years that uh, President Trump is not, you know, he, he is not afraid of any of this stuff, and it's why so many people uh, find him so appealing. Of course, professional politicians on Capitol Hill, they're terrified of things like this. But I think, quite frankly, all of this ultimately goes back to the state and local tax deductions fight that Democrats obviously lost on. And I think that those de the Democrats in Congress will do anything to try to get that back. And that's why we're seeing them fight for these, uh, for these, th I these see. bailouts now for, for state governments and local governments. So that might exactly be a right. compromise. That might goes, be the compromise what? point uh, that they're positioning for that. I have to ask quickly before, before we go, Charlie, Steve Moore wrote a piece in the journal today suggesting that the president through an executive order could essentially, without going through the rigmarole of how he can do it, an executive order right. to cut the payroll tax cut is possible. He could enact it by executive order. Any chance of that happening? I think it's probably, I do think that he would have to get bring uh, Republicans on Capitol Hill along, and I think that that would be a real problem because, again, they are very scared of doing anything that is in any way dramatic. But what kind of a weird situation is it that it's a radical idea that people would be allowed to keep the money that they earned, especially in a crisis like that, right. like, like the one that we're in the middle of? You know, th th that should be the first thing that federal lawmakers go to, the idea that people can and keep the money that they earn at least until we get through the, the, this crisis passes.
Right. And by the way, Nancy Pelosi says it's just for the rich people. In fact, according to Steve Moore, it would be capped at 75,000. So 75,000 and less would get the payroll tax cut uh, if, if, in fact, the president decides he goes that route. Charlie Hurt, great to see you. Thank you, Charlie.